Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Tech Production. Today, I, Bancroft, being joined once again by Jimmy, Nick, and like always, Fluff. Howdy. This is the second round, trying of the second round of the second round of the game. Yeah, what's up, <laughs> <there>, people? <laughs> um, and like always, there's buttons. Feel free to click them. They're there for a reason. But let's get into today's matchup. So this one's a very interesting. We do have both Jimmy and Nick playing uh, against each other. Um, Nick, let's go with him first. Your deck, Mecha Frieza, uh, you are using cards that aren't technically out in the U.S. yet, but you got them anyway, so kudos to you. And I'm rich. Jimmy's deck <laughs> is playing a different take on Baby. Uh, this is a yes, skillless sir. Baby version. Now, this is also in the mindset, if the rules get adjusted so that way uh, set 13 to Android 17 and 18 are actually, or is actually a useful deck. And I'll let... Um, Jimmy, you kind of go over the rolling there and how this deck is operating based on the assumption that that rolling should hopefully be updated so that deck is viable. Yeah, so uh, I will let Nick talk about his deck first because uh, when I get to explaining my variation of the deck, it'll be a little bit more long-winded. Uh, so Nick, would you like to talk a little bit about this particular build of Mecha Frieza? Is it very different from any of the other meta variations or is this uh, uh, something kind of new? <laughs> well, nope. Um, <laughs> pre pretty straightforward. Um, it runs most of the U9 package with U9 assembled, and pretty much you have to, not have to, but it's almost implied you're going to run some U9 package with the deck, just because it runs so well in Mecha Frieza. But the good thing about it, and with Yellow, is it runs a good amount of extra cards, but you're going to get extra value on your extra cards with your Awakened Leader. Because when you activate an extra card, your leader will tap some tap an opponent's battle card. So pretty much the sky's the limit on what you want to do. Um, I have some tech that I haven't put in the deck just yet, but even Kethless Fury, which is a tap two counterplay, you draw two cards. That can every extra card you play will gain more inherent value. So you play you can play standard stuff, but the sky's the limit on what you want to do. So. Of course. Um, but yeah, it's mostly standard U9 package. Um, this this game, um, I didn't mention it initially, but this is like watching two brick walls fighting, because um, both decks are very defensive. Um, Jimmy's is just straight stop attacks. I don't want attack. My deck is I'll let you attack, but I'm gonna tap your stuff. So um, as you will see as the game goes on, it's a lot of negates, negates, floodgates, negates. Um, but my deck is standard Mecha Frieza, just with some extra spice, and I can explain those in the, once we get to them. Of course. Uh, so, this variation of Baby relies on a, um update to the rulebook that is not currently fleshed out, has not been uh, changed just yet. But there is uh, major speculation within some of the judge groups that I'm a part of, and kind of the community as a whole at the moment. Uh, about what constitutes as a skillless battle card. So currently, as the rulebook stands at the moment of this recording uh, of this video, it states that a uh, battle card with its skills negated is still considered a skilled battle card. It does not fall under the category of a skillless battle card due to it having text. It's just the text cannot be activated. Can you... Do you, do you know the rule number that is to quote uh, for everyone that's curious about that? I, I will find it uh, quickly and bank off to do some editing magic and splash it on screen. Um, but with uh, the 17 and 18 yellow package coming out in set 13 refers to skillless battle cards, uh, both your own skillless battle cards and your opponent's skillless battle cards. And the deck revolves around, you know, negating your opponent's skills and then targeting those cards. And those targeted cards are referred to as skills battle cards. So the general community is expecting a um, change on what constitutes as a skillless battle card. And that being a card that with its skills negated can be targeted as a skillless card. Uh, so this variation of Baby relies on that ruling um, being in effect, which currently I guess you could say I'm a cheater because uh, the rule I'm playing a deck that does not uh, work currently. Well, the same could be for me, too, technically, because, um, like they were hinted at earlier, I am playing the new Mecha Frieza promo, the, hey, the Floodgate is. one, and there he is. Um, I don't think he sticks at this turn, this point, because I think you counterplay it. But I, Yeah, I do, uh, I do reply with uh, Baby uh, Diabolical Parasite. 
Yeah, but um, a, a great floodgate card for yellow. Um, it, you can play it in any yellow deck technically because there's not any restrictions to it. Um, it's a three cost, but its cost is has a permanent. Its cost is reduced for every yellow extra card in your energy and drop area. So you can play it for one essentially. Um, and when it does hit the field, if your opponent wants to attack with a non unison card, they have to tap something. So really good for slowing down turns, especially if you get a really wide board. Um, they're going to have to tap more of their stuff to more of the resources down, being it their leader card, extra cards, you can, or not extra cards, but energy, other battle cards, things like that. So it's a really good slowdown, um, especially if you top that with maybe a second one if you have it in hand or uh, Nimbus to slow slow plays down even further. Uh, and then you can count, you can double it up if they do tap something with a Bergamo in your hand, make them tap even more stuff down. So that's pretty much the whole point of this deck is just letting them tire themselves out, then you go in for quick strikes here and there. Uh, so if you have a perception higher than a three-year-old, you would realize that I am playing the Janimba package in Baby, uh, which is uh, is kind of odd because Janimba tends to want to be a very quick blitz out your opponent, a lot of attacks, very fast damage, where Baby tends to want to set back and, you know, turtle up and then rely on putting out these battle cards on your opponent's turn in the form of the negates uh, to pressure with, you know, a bunch of, you know, 15k swings. Uh, so I do going into this matchup that it's yellow, I'm facing Nimbus, I'm facing the Frieza Floodgate. I knew Nick was going to hoard some of those cards because he knows I can build a pretty wide board and uh, he does not want to take that many attacks in a single turn. Uh, exactly. And so. one of the things, too, is we were talking about this match right before we started playing. Uh, we were talking about if we switched our decks up a little bit. And Jimmy's like, no, I didn't switch my deck up. And then he <laughs> drops the parasitic ball. <laughs> Turn two energy. I was like, oh, yeah, you didn't change the deck up? Okay. So Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, so kinda, that, I was kind of messing with Nick. I was like, yeah, this is the but, same deck you faced last week. Don't worry about it. Nothing new. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's the perfect uh, trigger in my mind. I'm like, I need, to fl- I need to find my floodgates. I need to keep the board as low attacks as possible. And that's what this deck does. Um, it has Nimbus, it has the new Mecha Frieza promo. Even the Unison with its minus one stops that um, somewhat for a little bit too. Um, and I think that doesn't really come up as much now the more the more the game goes on, which is unfortunate because the game does go on because, like I said, this man's a brick wall. So it's, it's really me in my head. I just have to make the most count. Um, and I do get a lot of attacks. It's just literally every attack I do, it's some kind of response. And that's just baby in general, um, because they run like 30 negates. So it's hard to get an attack through. But the ones you do through, you, you do just, you can get through. You have to make them count. You have to double strike if you can, combo if you can, just make the most out of every attack. And I try, but it's, it's literally like going up a mountain. <laughs> Uh, and you will notice as a baby player, if you um, if you are currently a baby player or end up playing baby uh, due to profiles or if you're interested in the deck, that your opponent will hardcore overextend on every attack that they can get through because they realize that they're only getting maybe one to two attacks in a game that are going to go through. Uh, and you have to make those attack ca- attacks count. Like you can't just swing with a you know 15k leader swing and not combo up because you have to make that damage go through. Um, so it, it's great as a baby player, and if you pace yourself well, you can really force your opponent to overextend on attacks and leave their throat open uh, for a clapback, uh, which is something that's been really fun about the deck and learning the tempo and you know it really switches up the way you play the game, uh, which has been really enjoyable for me. And I guess same thing with Mecha Frieza, because Mecha Frieza is another, like, turtley deck that you're not going to get a lot of attacks through that are going to be worth anything. So you really have to get as much advantage through the few attacks you're getting through to Mecha Frieza. Yeah, I think one of the big differences between our decks is they're both, like you said, very control heavy. Yours is just, I'm going to negate every swing, every swing, every swing you do, because uh, mm-hmm. you're not even going to let them get to the battle phase. Versus my deck, it's more floodgatey. So... I'm saying you can attack if you want to, but you're going to have to play your turn absolutely right if you want to do anything. Otherwise, I'm going to punish you whenever I get my energy restood. Exactly. Uh, and usually with uh, with Baby, this variation of Baby, 
uh, a lot of people that have played against my my baby deck, they know the pacing that I usually take with it. Uh, and with this variation with the Janimba package, I've been playing it a little funky, where as soon as I can start the Janimba chain, I usually try to blitz through it because my opponent tends to feel a little bit more comfortable tapping out against baby. Uh, due to they have to make their turns count because baby's not going to let them, you know, do what they can. So they're going to try to put as many battle cards on field, you know, get as use as much energy as possible that they feel comfortable and don't feel like I'm going to kill them on turn three. And then you're able to blitz through that chain and it's it's like GG, you know, you're tapped out. You know, I critted you X many times as many attacks you didn't combo out of. And now you're playing hardcore catch up at that point, and I still have a bank of negates that I'm setting on top of uh, that you have to get through. Um, so it, it's a very, very interesting deck to play. Um, yeah, absolutely. And since I know my defense is going to be mostly floodgates to stop stuff, I have to really push to try to get stuff. And the Bergamo. Bergamo is just, like I said, it's amazing in this deck. Um, you're going to be able to spend two energy pretty easily um, af after so many turns, because um, a lot of your stuff is going to be during the defensive step. So it's really good to use it on offense or defense, like I showed here. Uh, he let my Roshi attack go through so I can use the Zama, Zama Super Combo to rest something and then um, tap his energy down a little bit more. Granted, in baby if they have any energy it's all even if they're tapped out it's going to be really hard because they still have d magic so it's a lot of the times you do have to just helmet put your helmet on just try to push through in their handout make them make them use their resources as much as possible but there's just so much value that baby gets off of its negates it's it's like i said before it's just an uphill battle and even still like my board is pretty decent. I mean, he doesn't really remove most of my stuff, so I'm able to get attacks through, or attacks. It's just making sure that they land. And the more I swing, the more it's hurting myself, because he is playing battle cards with his counterattacks. So the more I hurt, the more I try to hurt him, the more it hurts me in the long run. The, 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 the thing with Baby is you have to, you just have to play through it. There's no... Is if you if you're not attacking, he's just going to get into his win condition without you advancing the game. You're at least having him waste those negates. You just have to push through it. Yellow just has the unpleasure or displeasure rather of not being able to clear the field via effects. The best that they can hope to do is tap things down. Yeah. So and th this my, is the. My... Right, I'll let you finish, Nick, and then I'll. Well, I was saying my response to Fluff is I do have a couple bits of removal. Um, you don't see any of them because they're pretty low. Um, I do have Secret Identity Mass Saying, which helps clear board, which is perfect. And then there is an activate main on that Mecha Frieza 2, that I, the counterattack, where uh, for tap 2 you can play a Mecha Frieza. And the one that I run is will KO any battle cards that are in rest mode. So I do have a little bit of removal, but yeah, like you said, it's really hard. A lot of my actual removal is tapping their stuff down, and then if I have dual attackers, just swing into their pieces to make them go away. So, uh, that Toa is what makes this deck go. Um, if you don't know what the Toa does, when you activate the Overlord skill, uh, you can play her, you look at the bottom card of the deck, if it's a card with the Servant skill, you play it in rest mode with the skills negated. And that refers to the uh, new speculated ruling that cards with their skills negated are considered skillless battle cards. Uh, so that allows me to play the three drop Ninjinimba that picks up a skillless battle card between the energy cost of two and three, uh, put it back in my hand, play him, and he becomes a target for the Dark Dragon Ball that allows me to go up the chain. That, um, truthfully, because you and I hadn't talked about this, I think that is an unintended interaction, mm -hmm. but it is so solid. It is like, incredible. I, it is yeah, so I do. Yeah, I mean, if because if Android seventeen eighteen end up working the way that we think that it should, that ability to play a battle card with its skills negated effectively makes it a skillless battle card. It turns on so many other cards in the game because of that that's brilliant. Yeah. It it is it is such a. I I was a big fan of the Toa just, just to begin with because it gives you a alternate draw engine and baby, 
of uh, being able to play the Toei. It puts a, a 5k blocker on build, which is nothing to sneeze at, uh, and gives you another target for Overlord next turn. So it keeps giving you the draws. And I thought, still, that's a fantastic um, uh, card to begin with. But then once I started looking at the new ruling and started talking with other judges about the speculation on future um, rule changes, um, I was like, wow, like, I've been playing with the Jinnaba Chain and Soul Striker. I was like, I'm going to try to put it in Baby, since it, it has access to the Overlord skill. Yeah, uh, And you see right there, I did not have another Janimba to go into. I couldn't go into a second 3-drop Janimba. Uh, but that I did that just to give me another Overlord target next turn by playing the second Toa. Uh, so I essentially get two draws and then a setup if I do find a third Toa. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just been... It's just been really, really good in this deck. Uh, and if it does turn out that Bandai um, was it, that is an unintended uh, effect, and that they do some sort of uh, errata or word change that makes it so it only works for Android 17, 18, I don't know how that would work, then ignore everything about this deck. And, and Shadow does the big brain play of playing Obama. <laughs> But, but like Jimmy said, like if for some reason those roles don't get on there, thanks for watching this point. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's a pointless <laughs> video now, but for the small chance that it's not, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, great. Um, but e even even without the Janimba chain, it's still worth running that Janimba in this list because it allows you to load negates back into your hand for the next turn. And I think yeah. you do see me in this turn. I do play the Bula back out. Uh, and it gives me another 15k attacker and another negate, um, which is just, it's just fantastic. And you get those, two individual attack crit out of it. Are those Toa's blockers as well? They are blockers. Jeez. It is a, a it is a absurdly good card. Um, what a ton of value. <laughs> yeah. And for all for one energy, too. Like, it is incredible. Um, I, I, don't really see it doing a lot of play in the other Overlord decks. Maybe in uh, uh, Garlic Jr. might be worth uh, running. Uh, but I see its most value coming in something like Baby, where it's a very turtly defensive deck. Yeah. Out blockers. Majin uh, which... Vegeta already has its stuff so tight, and that deck is just gas as it is. So, yeah. yeah. Garlic I, Jr., I, perhaps. Yeah. And in future Overlord decks, Toa is still a fantastic card to consider for the list. Um, so I'm kind of lost in what, what is happening currently uh, in the match. I think you tapped down my Mechie Orp um, because you forgot to trigger the auto on your leader. Um, yeah, at this point, he has two life in hand. Or two life on hand, but he has two life. And I do have a double strike chop on hand, so... Essentially, at this point, it's just I just need to get an attack through, and then I think I could win. Um, and I get a little crazy, and I <laughs> tap three for the Vegeta. But at the end it's of the day, I didn't have anything really to play. So it's a shame really you didn't have like a Zeno Cell in hand. So yeah. I uh, and we've discussed it right here. You counterplayed with Cold Blood Bust, which does not affect Baby uh, um, uh, Baby Hatch. Uh, due to the entire yeah. spill resolving in the counter window before the card is played. Uh, it does not. Um, but at this point, I was literally fucked anyway. Um, his whole board is all it, all it took was for two strikes to get through. Um, I had no way to stop anything. I was out of floodgates, so it didn't matter. I, I had had this baby hatch in hand since uh, like two turns ago. I was just scared to uh, to play baby hatch due to um, cooler swift retaliation cooler, um, and the only reason I felt comfortable playing at that point is because you did tap down and you did not have enough energy to respond with a swift retaliation cooler. Uh, so yeah. I felt comfortable by putting baby on field. Otherwise, I was just going to try to bait it out on something like a uh, dimension magic or the. Um, um, Cooler army reinforcements. I was trying to bait the cooler so that I could reply with baby hatch on the next attack. Yeah. And I did skip my charge phase the last turn because I was pretty low in my hand. Um, the only other option that could have saved me if I drew it was um, I run Fu Shrouded in Mystery. That would have turned off his deck entirely. Um, he did have combo power, so he, might, he probably could have saved himself. But 
if that was on board, which is a great tech piece. It's it's a secret rare in of itself. So if you play any slow decks, I would highly recommend looking into that card, um, just because it stops your opponent even their next turn from activating abilities, and it gets even more value because it just says cards besides your leader. So it does even hit units and cards. So great tech piece. Of course, uh, we do have a profile coming out for this baby list. Uh, do take it with a grain of salt. If you're interested in playing it, do discuss it with your locals and your judge and see if everything's kosher there uh, due to it relying on a ruling that is not yet in place. Uh, and then again, if the ruling never comes out and they make Android 17 to 18 completely useless, uh, then that's Bandai's fault. Don't, don't, don't get mad at us. <laughs> and with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Um, like Jimmy said... Skillless baby, if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, thanks for tuning in. Um, Nick, last words. Yeah, the Mecha Frieza list will be out too, um, probably tomorrow or Saturday, um, whenever you're watching it. Uh, don't look at it; it's a bad video. So, it's a bad list. Don't watch it. Don't, don't tell people that. We want their money. <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah, we'll take your pennies. Uh, fuck you. Pay me. Fair enough. Fluff, would you lead us out? Um, after having watched the video, Jimmy, genius, but also I think Silver Bullets would hurt you so bad. Of course. That deck. Yeah. Like, Silver Bullets would just tear you up. Of course. Um, Nick, rough break. Uh, Yellow doesn't really have a way to deal with that giant field. <laughs> it happens, but... Anyway, I really enjoyed the duel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, read your cards, know your plays, let us make mistakes so you don't have to fluff out.